Today we're going to be looking at how to run your own personal Bitcoin node on a Raspberry Pi. By running your own node you can skip using a third party and directly make transactions on the Bitcoin network without any additional fees. If you don't know how Bitcoin works, it's essentially a network of thousands of nodes like the one we're going to be building in this video. Each one has its own full copy of the Bitcoin blockchain, which is a record of every transaction which has ever occurred on the network. These nodes then work together to verify the transactions and maintain the blockchain. So you'll essentially have a record of all Bitcoin transactions stored on your node and you'll be helping to keep the Bitcoin network decentralized. This is different to mining Bitcoin, which is a really bad idea on a Raspberry Pi, as it would take you a couple of hundred years to mine a single dollar. Unlike Bitcoin mining, running a node doesn't require any expensive hardware and can be done on a $35 Raspberry Pi and an external hard drive. We're going to be running a software package called Umbral on our Bitcoin node. It's really easy to use and their website literally guides you through the installation process step by step. The best part is that it's free and all of its source code is available on GitHub. To build your own Bitcoin node, you need to get a Raspberry Pi 4 and a 1TB hard drive. Umbral recommends an SSD. You'll then also need a 16GB microSD card, a power supply, Ethernet cable and a case. Instead of using a regular case, we're going to be building a customized Bitcoin node case and use an ice tower to cool our Pi. I started out by designing a case in Fusion 360. I designed the case to house the Raspberry Pi with a low profile ice tower installed on it and then an SSD alongside it. I'm using an M.2 NVMe drive because it's a bit more compact. SSDs produce quite a bit of heat, so I added a second fan to the front of the case to push air into the case, which will then be exhausted from the vents on the side. Lastly, I designed a clear acrylic cover, which I'm going to engrave a logo onto and then install some yellow LEDs to give it a gold glow while it's running. I 3D printed the case on my Endo 3, along with the four legs and four corner clamps for the cover. The corner clamps are mainly there to stop the light from the LEDs shining up and out of the case. I then laser engraved and cut out the lid for the case. I engraved a mirror image on the back of the lid so that the top surface is still smooth, so it won't trap dust and can be easily cleaned. Now that we've got all the components made up, let's start assembling it. First I'm going to install the legs, which I just held in place with some M3 screws. It probably would have been easier to just glue these into place. Next let's open up our Raspberry Pi. Before I install the Pi in the case, I'm going to flash the SD card. I'll do this using the method outlined on the Umbrel page. This involves downloading Bellina Etcher and the Umbrel image, and then flashing the image to the SD card. Now that this is done, I'm going to put the SD card into the Pi and then assemble the ice tower. To mount the Pi, I'm going to install one set of brass standoffs which came with the ice tower onto the bottom of the case, and I'll hold the Pi in place with the second set. Next I'm going to add the cooling pad and install the ice tower on the CPU. The ice tower is held in place using some M2.5 screws which go into the brass standoffs. Next I'm going to install the second fan which came with the ice tower onto the front of the case. I just pressed some M3 nuts into the pockets on the front and then secured the fan with some M3 screws. Once this was done I connected the wiring for the fan to the GPIO pins. As mentioned earlier, I'm using an NVMe drive. So I bought a low profile USB enclosure for it and I'm just going to be using the PCB inside it to mount the drive onto. I designed a cutout on the case to match the faceplate from the enclosure to hold it all in place. It was at this stage that I noticed that I designed a slot to run the power cable through and had forgotten to put it through the case before installing the power. So I had to remove the power to add the power cable and then reinstall it.
I then made up a string of four 3mm yellow LEDs, one for each corner of the case. These would fit into the holes I cut out in the cover. I used a 150 ohm current limiting resistor on each of them, and then added some connectors to the end to plug into the GPI opens. I glued the LEDs into the cover, then plugged it in and closed it up, using some M3 screws in each of the corner clamps. The corner clamps should align themselves as they go over the top of the protruding LEDs. Now that this is all done, the Bitcoin node is complete and ready to be powered up. When I switched it on for the first time, I found that the RGB lighting on the fan on the ice tower detracted from the yellow glow of the LEDs. I decided to replace the fan with another plain black fan which I had from another ice tower. This produced a much cleaner look. You can now only see the faint flashing LEDs on the PI and the SSD under the cover. Now let's get back to Umbral. It says to switch the power on and leave it for 5 minutes to boot up. You don't need to connect a monitor to set it up. Once it's booted up you can then access the dashboard by going to umbral.local on any other computer or mobile device connected to the same network. If you do plug in a monitor then you'll be able to see some diagnostic information while it's booting up. When you open up the dashboard you're presented with a welcome screen and then you're guided through the setup process. You'll need to type in your name and choose a password. You then ask to write down your seed words as a recovery mechanism if you forget your password. It's quite important that you do this, as there is no I forgot my password option when logging in. Lastly, you'll need to accept a disclaimer. You'll then be taken to the main dashboard. Your node will begin downloading the Bitcoin blockchain. Depending on how fast, or in my case how slow your internet is, this could take a few hours or even a few days. At the time of making this video, the blockchain is around 327 gigabytes. Your node will also transfer a similar amount of data on a month-to-month -month basis, so you'll need a reasonably good internet service to run one. You'll still be able to use your node while the blockchain is being downloaded, but you'll have to wait to unlock the full functionality of your node. You can also add apps and wallets to your node to truly customize it. Let me know in the comments section if you do land up building your own node and what you think of this one. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials, and reviews.